be the number one for Oklahoma State this season. After being mostly the number two last year, she has emerged as a true ace. Really good movement. She's a lefty. She's able to throw a rise ball in all quadrants, and she's a leader in the circle for Oklahoma State. And not to mention that she's got a zero ERA, gave up no runs in her opening weekend at ASU last weekend. So here we go, the first of 13 games today across our networks as well as ESPN+. Plus. Everything's available for you on the app as you're out and about on this Friday. And the first pitch is taken by Christina Burkhart. 71 degrees with 89% humidity today. A little bit overcast skies, but it's always a great day when you can have a loaded schedule of softball as Burkhart the grad transfer from the University of North Carolina swats that one away, and the count is one and one. Well, Kayla, it is a, a real great addition to this Michigan squad to be able to get a player of Burkhart's caliber, who last year was a 333 hitter for the Tar Heels, and they say it's like she's been along with this team all along, how great she's meshed in with this squad. Yeah, you got the sense from Coach Hutch that she's just been around the program forever. Even though it's only been a year, she fit right in. She just felt like she belonged at Michigan, and she belongs in the lineup getting the spot in the leadoff here today. One, two zips upstairs on the sixth year. Maxwell last year, first team all Big 12 selection. Averaging almost nine strikeouts per seven. And that is in at the knees for a called strike three. The first strikeout of the day for Maxwell sends Burkhart back to the dugout. Now batting number three, Lexi Blair. So Burkhart, their top hitter so far. Blair coming in, just two for her first 14. And behind her, Taylor Bump with the team's lone home run on the season thus far with Michigan coming into play here, their first game of the weekend. A three and two mark, they open the season in Tampa with wins twice against UMKC and Illinois State and their losses against Florida and USF. And Michigan had some tough fought games in that opening weekend. And this is a team that didn't play outside of the Big Ten last season. So to go out, play a tough schedule early on, you know they're itching to get some experience that they weren't able to have last season. It was weird for those teams that did make it to the postseason last year. And here we've got from the Big Ten, Michigan and Northwestern and Wisconsin to get there. And then you're kind of breaking out of that shell of conference only play. A lot of cold weather travel as well. You see those teams from the northern part of the country opening their seasons down here because quite simply, you might be under snow or it's simply too cold to play. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we heard that Michigan before their first tournament hadn't even seen the field. They had only been practicing indoors and that's one of the biggest challenges to being a team from up north. But no excuses. They're gonna still come out and compete and act like they've been there even though they haven't. Blair takes the 3-1 and deposits that foul down the line and it goes three and two here on Blair. Back-to-back left-handed hitters to start things off here against Maxwell. Seven of the nine in this starting lineup for Michigan, hitting from the left-hand side. A search for the right ball. <laughs> and now we've got more coming in from the dugout. 
Maxwell just wanted to make sure she had the right one. Needs to be perfect. She's got a tough, <laughs> tough task trying to get Lexi Blair out. And one of the things that makes Blair so impressive, she's just a kid that puts barrel on ball consistently. Only had seven strikeouts in the entirety of last season. So she's a tough out for sure. Has worked her way to a full count. She hit 406 a year ago, reigning Big Ten Player of the Year. And has just been a force ever since she came on campus in 2019. All Big Ten first team that year. Hitting number two here in their lineup. Maxwell working a 3-2 count after she struck out Burkhart looking to begin the game. Seventh pitch of this duel will lead us to number eight. Yeah, and this is what makes Lexi Blair such a tough out. She's got really great hand-eye coordination. She's going to be able to try and use her quick hands, her speed to get on base. She's going to run a little bit. Just pure athleticism in the box. Maxwell looking for the right one on 3-2. Blair with a hopper over to first. Taken easily for out number two. Now back number 13, take it Michigan, number 16 in the country. And coming off of a 2021 season that took them all the way out west, where they finished their season with a 10-5 loss against Washington, a winner-take-all game in that regional final. Wolverines had a 5-1 lead in that game, but a big rally late by the Huskies doomed Michigan that day. But three-time defending Big Ten champions, they come in here with a very good sense of who they are, Kayla. Yeah, and one of the big things that we heard from Coach was that they have a lot of confidence in their, themselves. They want to go out and compete. They want to go out and win. They're putting in the work to be successful this season. And for a lot of those returners, when you go to a place like Seattle, you end your season short, shorter than you'd like, and you had the opportunity to potentially make it to that Super Regionals, you're gonna feel like there was a piece missing and you're gonna go do whatever you can to remedy that for next year so you don't feel that same feeling again where you just came up short. That sting can linger but be used for motivation. Third baseman Taylor Bum. Another all Big Ten first team pick last year who had a power surge down the stretch. Ton of home runs goes chasing. It's two and two with Maxwell in search of a one, two, three first. And that was a beautiful pitch by Maxwell. You can already see early in this game her effective movement. She spins the ball really, really well. Has a little bit of velocity, but that little late sharp break makes it really hard for hitters like Bump to hit that ball in the outside corner. Roller to second, Evans on to win. A one, two, three, top of the first for Maxwell. Oklahoma State swings the bats next. St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational, presented by Wilson, is brought to you by Visit St. Pete Clearwater, Florida, and Wilson Fast Pitch, leaders in softball innovation. A 1-2-3, top of the first for Michigan at the plate. And Oklahoma State comes to the dish now as they get ready to go against one of the top pitchers in the Big Ten, the senior Megan Bobian for the Wolverines. Yeah, Megan Bobian, tons of experience in the circle. She's a senior, and she is really going to spin it up today. That's her whole stick. Is she's got really good movement, deceptive spin. And a big key for her today is going to be how well she changes her speed. She's so crafty. She's got great location. But the change of speed is going to be a really important factor in being able to keep these Oklahoma State, these powerful Oklahoma State hitters off balance and within themselves. So the chess match begins here for Bobian against the number seven team in the country. This is a team with Naomi at the top of their lineup, but head coach Kenny Gajewski thinks this team can hit more than 100 home runs this year. It is a powerful squad, a team that's been to the Women's College World Series each of the last two postseasons. And they opened their season 
four and one wins over Arizona State, Utah, Cal Baptist, and Missouri State. Their only loss in their first five games against one of the top pitchers in the eastern part of the country, Peyton St. George at Duke. Yeah, definitely a big time upset for Duke out in Tempe last weekend. But this Oklahoma State team is really talented despite the fact that they did lose. They're aggressive at the plate. They're all going to swing really hard. They bring a really solid presence to the plate. And I can tell you right now that they're not the team that's going to be hesitant at the plate. They're going to make sure they're attacking, they're swinging hard. And they might have some bigger strikeout numbers on the season because of that. Two and two to the senior. How about the movement? You talked about it. We see it in just five pitches as she went fishing and strikes out. Yeah, that's a great location for that off-speed pitch. In the dirt, Kylie Naomi, Naomi has absolutely zero chance of hitting this ball. It is well out in front of the plate. But again, that's that aggressive nature of this Oklahoma State team, and Bobian takes advantage of it. Here's Brianna Evans, pounds that into the dirt. McVay at short, her throw across the diamond is not in time. And Evans has the infield single, the first hit of the day. As a beautiful slap right there by Brianna Evans. Using the ground, making Ella McVay the freshman shortstop for Michigan, try and throw on the run. There's no chance, too much speed right there from Evans. And that is textbook slapping right there for you. Evans at first, the great multi-sport athlete. One of those was track and field when she was in high school. She was already a couple steps through the bag. And a runner on as Carson takes a look at first from behind the plate for Cheyenne Factor. Yeah, and that's something that, you know, you talk about the freshman Ella McVeigh at shortstop is going to have to learn is really reading the opposition. She was a little bit too deep, wasn't able to get that in time to throw her out. That's going to come with more scouting reports, more experience, being able to react a little bit sooner to that ball than she would have otherwise. Factor a starter going back to her freshman season, started every game in center field last year. And he got picked second team all Big 12. And hard to get out, a career 332 hitter. On the move, a throw down to second base, just a tad high as Evans is in with the stolen base. So she's got more hits than anybody on the roster thus far, and now she's put herself into scoring position. Yeah, I like this aggressiveness from Oklahoma State. Early in the game, absolutely go run. Put the pressure on the, the catcher behind the plate, Hannah Carson, not able to throw her out. Ball in the dirt, and Evans is off for third base. So in the span of two pitches, she goes first to third. And that right there is why you steal. You, you get 60 feet closer, and then when Michigan makes a mistake, boom, you're on third, ready to score. And all it's going to take is a sack fly from Cheyenne Factor, and Cowgirls are going to have a run early in this ball game. Factor had squared. Bump had come in from third base. McVeigh sneaking in behind Evans, trying to see if they could catch her a little bit too far down the line. So it goes to three and two. Yeah, it looks like that was an attempted squeeze play. And it looks like Coach Gajewski's uh, potentially trying to talk to his players. I don't know if that was a, a missed opportunity right there, missed sign, but they actually executed a squeeze Oklahoma State did last weekend. Field in for a 3-2, slapped into right. That's a base hit. one nothing. Oklahoma State on the RBI single from Factor. That's the way to manufacture a run. Her at bat started with a runner at first and ends with a runner crossing the plate. Solid work that right there by Factor. You don't get the squeeze down. So what do you do? You hit a nice, easy single opposite field. It's 
pitch on the outside corner. She takes it where it's pitched, picks up an easy run for the Cowgirls. And that's an experienced hitter right there, knowing what her job is and getting it done. The senior hitting behind the freshman, setting things up for the third team All-American, Haley Busby. Love to see offense early. You look at the six games from yesterday. The final one between Wisconsin and Notre Dame was decided by a single run. But there were some crooked numbers put up yesterday by teams in the first day of action in Clearwater. Some crooked numbers and some big swings. There was a couple home runs that were some bomb skis out of the park. And he mentioned the humidity. It doesn't matter how humid it is or how much water's in the air. Ball is going to leave the yard with the talented hitters that are at this tournament. Another one to the backstop. And it's another free base. Factor up to second on a ball that's skipped by Carson. We've seen early in this game, Bobian just really struggling to finish her pitches. Too many balls in the dirt, leaving opportunities open for Oklahoma State to take advancements on the base pass. It's your pitching coach, Jen Bredage, just taking the opportunity to talk to her, get her reset. And that's the challenging part in a tournament like this, playing in a game like this, facing a top 20, top 10 opponent in Oklahoma State, is you don't have time to sit and relax and find your rhythm. You have to be ready from pitch number one. And the Cowgirls have taken advantage of some mishaps by Bobian. Her second wild pitch of the inning. She started with a strikeout of Kylie Naomi. Evans with an infield single hit to shortstop. She beat that out. Stole second, took third. And Factor with a 3-2 count, hit an RBI single out into right field. Carol Hutchins, 38th season at the helm. It's the 45th season of Michigan softball, 38 of which she's been the head coach. The legend in the game. Now 2-1 to Busby. And that drops in for a strike to even things up, 2-2. Two and two. You don't have to be great at math. You look at the number at the bottom, you add two to that for wins, and that would tie her with Mike Candrea for the most wins in the history of the sport as he retired with 1,674. That is a big pitch right there from Bobby, and to come back for a second strike out of the inning and retire a slugger. Yeah, really nice reset right there by Bobby. And I like the pitch sequence going to, to Busby. Two early change-ups that Busby did not swing at. And then she goes upstairs with the rise ball. Looks good to Busby, but way out of the zone. Can't hit it. Big time K. Stillwater's own Julia Cottrell, the junior catcher who transferred in from Florida. Her dad Jeff on the staff. That transfer announced back in November after she hit 294 with the Gators, started 50 games there, but really happy to be back home in a place where she's most comfortable. The count goes one and one on the junior. It's Factor at second after Evans scored the first run of the game. That zips up and in, snared by Carson, preventing another ball from getting away, and a dangerous one there to Katro. That was a nice stop by Hannah Carson behind the dish because that ball definitely got away from Bobian. And a tough day behind the plate right now for Carson, but she's doing her best. That pitch up in the zone certainly has been enticing to the last couple hitters. Yeah, no doubt. And Bobian's not going to blow it by any of these hitters, but it's that deceptive spin that's so good. And that rise ball looks like it's coming in about belt high, belly button high for these big time hitters, and it just keeps floating up, inducing a swing and miss.
just got a piece of it to keep it two and two. Barely nicked her bat. Once again, just so far out in front, that's that speed change right there from Bobian, that change up that looks so good. Had Cottrell way out on her front foot, but barely taps her barrel to stay alive in this at bat. Pitcher's working in the first. Here's her 24th of the inning. It'll be at least 25 after Maxwell on the other side in a 1-2-3 first inning through 18 pitches. Michigan squad led the nation a 123 ERA last year. Bobian with her head coach saying her stuff is as good as it's ever been. Former three-time Michigan Gatorade Player of the Year. Most players at the Division I level, you see they've won that once, maybe twice. Three times for her as she's gone all Big Ten first team as well. And Cottrell fouls that one away and holds three and two. And you can hear already, this is a 10 o'clock Eastern first pitch today. You got the crowd going, you got the dugouts going. This is great energy. Oh, it's fantastic energy. You can't ask for more for a preseason tournament. I mean, we got softball on TV in February. Let's go. 3-2 is stroke to center. It sends Blair on the move. She can only watch it go. A two-run home run on a 3-2 pitch for Julia Cottrell. And it's 3-0 Cowgirl. Well, we heard from Coach Gajewski that Julia Cottrell was the hottest hitter coming into the season, and she showed it right there. She got so much pop after an incredible 10 pitch at bat. Gets something in her wheelhouse, low in the zone, about mid-thigh, and strokes this baby to deep center. Now, number 26, Morgan Wayne. Now Sydney Pennington, rather Morgan win. So the bases are clear with two down. How close it was in that battle for Bobian to getting out of it. This inning could look so different. A couple of wild pitches could have been just a one run frame. Instead it's three with a chance to add more. Okay, you know, you have two athletes going toe to toe and you're just waiting for one of them to break. And Julia Cottrell did such a good job fouling off pitches. Again, you talk about that tipped change up that she barely got her barrel on. That's the difference between, uh, you know, a strikeout to end the inning and a 3-0 deficit. That's shallow center field and the inning is over, but three on the board after one for Oklahoma State. Julia Cottrell setting the tone early for Oklahoma State. It's something in her wheelhouse and absolutely blasts it. It's 3-0 on Friday morning. We are playing softball here in Clearwater. The amount of great matchups that we have here, unparalleled. Coming on to make the diving catch. Wow, just really big plays. Back to the track. The best ticket, the hardest ticket to get in town. Coverage all day from the St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational. Now it's time for a Wilson schedule update. Like, let's take a look at what's coming up with our schedule update. As both of these teams get their tournament underway, Michigan will see UCF in a challenging game against Florida State and LSU. Oklahoma State with LSU, South Florida, Washington, and Northwestern. There is no hiding in this tournament, Kayla. Every game is a great game. That's why you love to see tournaments like this. I, I mean, it's top 25 matchups left and right. I'm really looking forward to Oklahoma State, Washington, though. I think that's going to be an incredible ball game, especially with how well Washington looked in weekend one. 
We go to the second between Michigan and Oklahoma State. The Wolverines in search of their first base hit and through four batters as Lauren Eshman grounds out to Evans. It's four up and four down with a strikeout for Kelly Maxwell. And we're on the other side of things, Bobian has looked a little bit uncrisp today, not in rhythm. Kelly Maxwell, on the other hand, looks really sharp. Came out, good spin, good location early in this ball game. You can see Michigan struggling a little bit at the plate to get good barrel on ball so far. And it's early still, but she's induced a strikeout and a couple of miss hits so far. Thole had just 19 at bats last year in her first season. Started a couple times at catcher, once at DP, which is where she is today, hitting fifth in the lineup. And, and you were talking about this before we came on the air. Not only is it an opportunity against top 25 competition to figure out where your team might stack up, how your team might stack up, but also for yourself as a young player such as her to get a grasp of, all right, where am I, what do I need to work on, and how do I fit in? Absolutely, it's so important early in these tournaments to get opportunities for young players to, to know your role, to know where you fit on the team, where you fit in the lineup, what your skill set's gonna be at the plate, in the field, whatever it may be to help, help your team best win. And, and that's so important to get these early opportunities. Especially when you play these early season tournaments and you're playing about five games in a day where you're getting that consistent rep where you maybe drop game one, but you gotta get back up and go play game two tonight against a better opponent. So I think these are just invaluable experiences that these players are gonna put in their back pockets and it's gonna carry them through conference play and in the postseason. 2-2 two -two gets a flare out to right, that carries Alexander has to sprawl to get in front of it, but she gets the job done. <laughs> Alexander out in right field dealing with a lot of a lot of spin on this ball. You can see it turns her around a little bit, but credit to Alexander. Didn't make a good read on this initially, but hung with it and ended up getting the out. Yeah, it looked like she was talking about to her teammates the way that ball came off the bat. It drifted a little bit farther than she thought, perhaps. And, and that's an interesting thing, too, that for a team like Michigan coming from up north that they deal with is not being able to be outside. You don't have the effects of the wind when you're playing ball indoors. Yeah, no, they uh, practice, like you said, in an indoor facility, so they don't get pop flies. Like, the outfielders have not seen traditional pop flies like a, a team that gets to practice outside every day does. Not a ton of reps, but again, no excuses. You still gotta make the grab. You know, and that's something that these outfielders are gonna learn, uh, especially somebody like an Alexander playing right field. There's so many things that you have to think about. The, the wind, uh, the spin off your pitcher, the fact that most of the time the balls are gonna tail towards the line if you're playing right and left field. So all of these things that you learn from experience and reps, and it's really important that you get as many as you can because I can tell you right now as an outfielder, your reps look a lot different off of a live pitcher and hitter than they do in BP. There's no substitute for the, the juice of a crowd behind you, the pressure of facing a three nothing deficit early on in the game. And it's another young player from Michigan, Annabelle Weidra, the freshman out of Hoover, Alabama, who is a top 10 recruit and the Gatorade Player of the Year in Alabama last year. Check swing, she didn't go around, it goes to two and two. It's Bobby DeMeo making the call at third. Tom Meyer behind the dish, Cameron Ellison at first, and Smokey Eds is the umpire at second. Junior to the freshman, 2-2. Gets her second strike out of the day. She's faced six, 
and retired all six. Michigan hitless through two. Oklahoma State up by three. Sunday afternoon on ABC Women's College Basketball from the SEC. It's top-ranked South Carolina, number 12 Tennessee, with coverage starting at 1 Eastern and everything available for you on the ESPN app. This is an unprecedented weekend of women's sports events with softball, basketball, gymnastics, soccer, you name it, across ABC and ESPN. This is the first of 13 softball games today from Clearwater, I'm Mike Cousins with Kayla Bro as we get set for the bottom third of the Oklahoma State lineup. In the bottom of the second inning, they're up 3-0. The first highlighted by a two-run home run from Julia Cottrell off of Megan Bobian, who is one of a pair of standout pitchers for this Michigan squad. It's not just one, but two, earning them the nickname the Deuce. Yeah, Megan and Bobian and Alex Scirocco for Michigan led the nation with the lowest ERA. They're so talented, and uh, Coach Hutchins calls them the deuce because of their ability to work together as a one-two punch. They offset each other so well. Two of the most talented pitchers in the country, but I don't think one exists without the other. You know, I don't think they have as many strikeouts or as much success if they don't have each other to work off of because with Bobian's spinny lefty movement, with Alex Drocto's righty power pitcher. I mean, it's just so tough for opponents to prep for both of those kinds of styles. The numbers just jump out at you from last year. Led the nation a 123 ERA. One of those two pitchers started 44 of their 46 games and threw 95% of all of their innings. It's four pitches, four out of the zone. Sydney Pennington leads off with a free pass. Lead off runner aboard to start the second. Number 14, Harley Petty. Carly Petty, the junior, number eight hitter. The teams will see Starocco, the junior, throughout the course of this tournament as well. Last year. Just eye-popping numbers, 270 strikeouts in 146 innings. Yeah, you took the words out of my mouth. I mean, those two pitchers combined for 472 strikeouts on the season. That's big-time numbers. And I think that's going to be a little bit different this year. Not only do batters have more information on Bobian and Scirocco than they previously did, just with another year under their belt, but like we mentioned earlier, they're getting out of the Big Ten only competition. So now they're going to go face more top 25 opponents in the preseason. They're facing a much more difficult schedule early on in the season that's going to test them as they continue to try and go face batters day after day. Petty, the third year starter with a bouncer up the middle. And they get the out at first. This bump comes across to make the play, putting Pennington into scoring position with one away. Now batting number 55, Chelsea Alexander. You know, Oklahoma State's always been known for their power numbers, their explosive offense, but really like what they're doing with the short game today between Brianna Evans getting a nice slap down. They attempted a squeeze, weren't successful at it. And this sacrifice bunt, they're trying all of their tools in their arsenal to put runners in scoring position to try and get some offensive production because they know how tough this pitching staff is to hit against. And so far, success begetting success with three hits in the first. And a leadoff runner on here in the second, whereas Michigan has gone over six at the plate. Alexander, a monster 2021 season. She hit 373, third on the team, and a big jump from her prior best average of 304. Yeah, Ogle 
Oklahoma State has just proven to be really, really good. So much depth, one through nine. They returned the majority of their starters from an incredible last season, and a trip to the Women's College World Series. And you look at their roster at the beginning of this season, and you sit there and say, this team is primed to make a run back to Oklahoma City because you look at what they were able to do last year, the slugging percentage, the, the 93 home runs. That was one of the tops in the country. And it wasn't just one or two batters that pulled most of the weight. They really spread the wealth, the power numbers throughout their entire lineup. And Allison Febri is gone, and that's their biggest loss from last season. But other than that, they're locked and loaded and ready to have those same power numbers again this season. Check swing and a ball in the dirt. Alexander went around. And so first time through the order, Bobian accounts for three strikeouts. Some work to get there, though, as that was the fourth three ball count first time through the lineup as she's sitting at 43 pitches. Yeah, without a doubt, Oklahoma State's making her work, but the changeup has been the most effective, effective pitch that she's thrown today. And you can expect that she's going to continue to throw it because it's been a strike often or it's been swung and missed at. Kylie Naomi. Perfect example of that strikeout on the changeup in her first at bat today. She takes out the knees for the only player coming back in the Big 12 who had double digit home runs with 14 of them last year and 15 stolen bases. So get her on the base pass and look out. She's trying to advance Pennington at second base, who started with a leadoff walk and moved up to second on a sacrifice bunt by Petty. Hey, don't you love hitters that can do it all? A little speed, a little power. Just try and stop me any way you can. <laughs> Bobian might disagree, but they certainly make for <laughs> exciting games to watch. All time, these teams have only ever played on a neutral field. 12th matchup between Oklahoma State and Michigan, dating back to 1982. 6 5 in favor of the Cowgirls. Couple fouled away. Holds 2 and 2. This Cowgirl team really extending their at bats well, fouling off a lot of pitches. They're making it tough for Bobian today. And they've been hit and miss with their success levels on that, Julia Cottrell being the biggest success of their offense today. But they're making her work, driving that pitch count up, bottom of the second inning, and she's already thrown 48 pitches. That's exactly what you want to do as an opposing offense. Will there be room along the fence? And with not an inch to spare, it's put away. The inning is over. 3-0. Oklahoma State at the end of two. Welcome back to the 2022 St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational presented by Wilson. It's always a gorgeous day for softball, but especially today with temperatures in the 70s on day two of this event. And here's a look at the VitaCost.com Hospitality Zone. Well, it's 5 o'clock somewhere, and it's currently after 5 o'clock in Istanbul. But you know what? It's the start of the weekend in Clearwater, and we're all having a good time as we take this game to the third. Michigan and Oklahoma State in a 3 nothing. Cowgirls lead in a tournament that is packed with top 25 teams. Both of these teams inside the top 20, with Michigan coming in at number 16 and Oklahoma State at number 7. Along with 
Kayla Bro, the three-time All-American, Mike Cousins, along with you. We are glad to have you with us as we get ready to see the bottom third of this Michigan lineup, where so far Kelly Maxwell has seen six and retired six. Count one and two now on Hannah Carson, the catcher. Career 293 hitter, their regular backstop a year ago, looking for their first hit today. A couple of strikeouts already for Kelly Maxwell. Into the dirt, a high bounce. Evans waited on it at second. Comes in and beats Carson by a step to get the first out here in the top of the third. Now batting, number one, Ellie Sealer. So two top 20 teams here. This tournament this weekend features five of the top 10. And everywhere you look, it's teams that we're going to be talking about the entirety of the season and especially in the postseason. Yeah, I mean, you just, this is a gauntlet of a tournament. Tough competition left and right. And I'm looking at the top two right there. UCLA, Washington for the Pac-12. Scoop on the first. Great play. Oh. <laughs> Fantastic play with the glove. Pitchers can play defense too. It had to be perfect, yeah, Kayla, and it was. Okay. Yeah, no doubt. Does a good job. Scoop off the glove initially. Rebounds, helps herself out. That's such a really good quality play right there by Maxwell. Good reaction. And a lot of times pitchers give up on that, not her. Assuredly, yeah, exactly like she drew it up. Yeah, Maxwell's just looking really solid all around today. And going back to the top 25 teams that we're going to see in this tournament in UCLA and, and Washington, really excited to see Washington hit, hit the field. They have a freshman, Olivia Johnson. She's the National Freshman of the Week. Tons and tons of power. Hit three home runs in her opening weekend, including a grand slam. Just one of those players that's going to be an impact player from the moment that she steps on the field, and you love to see those freshmen that fit right in early on and take advantage of every single second that they have in college. Joe and two here to McVeigh, the freshman from Iowa. Roller to short, taken care of by Naomi. Maxwell, exceedingly sharp through three. She's retired all nine she's faced in the Michigan. The history of the Women's College World Series. Some of the names you know, and man, 1992, we're what, 30 years out from that? It seems like it was five years ago. Alabama, hey, I know somebody who was on that team. Kayla Bro, my cousins, glad to have you with us. She was a national champion, three-time All-American. And we've got Michigan, Oklahoma State here. Michigan, the 2005 national champions, first team east of the Mississippi to win the title. What's it going to take for this team to get back to be one of the final eight teams in the country? Yeah, Michigan is actually one of my early picks for making it to the Women's College World Series just because they have their pitching back and how successful they were last season. But they're going to need their freshmen in their lineup to really step up. I'm looking at hitters like Annabelle Weidra, uh, the shortstop, McVeigh. 
to be those impact players, to tip them over the scales offensively because that's where they fell short last season. So if they can pick up offensively some pieces that they missed last season, I think they got a chance, depending on where they go for regionals and super regionals, to make it to OKC. Not exactly the easiest draw last year to run into one of the best pitchers in the country and have to make that long trip out to Seattle to take on Washington where they came within just a game of advancing to Supers, finish off a 38-8 and eight season. Evans leading it off. That's off the glove of McVeigh at shortstop. And for the second time without hitting a ball out of the infield, Evans is safely aboard. Evans understands her job gets the two hop on a great bouncing slap once again where she's hitting the top half of the ball exactly the perfect form makes a tough play for McVeigh at shortstop she can't handle it that's putting pressure on the defense that is textbook right there and you talked about with Evans last at bat she beat out a ball to shortstop because they were playing a little bit further back this time a little bit closer in and she puts it in a more difficult spot closer to the second base back that's right and that's one of those moments as a hitter she's like in her head probably saying to herself bring it defense play wherever you want i'm gonna outskill you i'm gonna make it so you can't throw me out because of my precision and my skill set that i have at the plate she's now two for two it gets ruled an infield single she took second base on bobian and carson back in the first with factor at the plate and eventually came into score Another interesting thing that I think about from a base running perspective is Bobian throws a lot of off-speed pitches. So I'm going to try and pick a pitch if I'm going to steal, if I'm Evans. Pitch, pick a pitch that I think she's going to be inclined to throw a change up. When she's behind in the count right now, this would be a good opportunity potentially. On the move, a throw from the knees is not in time. Two for two on stolen base tries for Evans. Now, Evans does a really good job from a mechanical perspective of stealing a base too. She does a good job of clipping the backside of the bag. She doesn't s slide head first. She does a traditional easy pop-up slide where her right back foot's gonna sneak into the back corner of the bag. Makes it look easy, simple, and efficient. It's already the sixth time that Oklahoma State He's hitting with runners in scoring position just here in the third, a 3-0 lead, an RBI single for Factor in the first, a two-run homer for Cottrell, just two batters later in that inning. Payoff pitch, slow roller, back to the circle. Easily handled by Bobian. And it allows Evans to take third. Now batting number 17, Haley Busby. Well, Saturday, ABC. Hey, that's tomorrow. Texas and Chris Beard and the number 20 Longhorns host his former team, the Texas Tech Red Raiders, one of the best defensive teams in the country. That game in Austin coverage starts 12.30 Eastern on ABC and the ESPN app. Now we're going to see Texas softball in action here today later on as well. Yeah, looking forward to seeing the Longhorns hit the field. They're another one of those programs similar to Oklahoma State where they're relying on some transfers in the circle. Miranda Ellish, Haley Dolcini, some big time pitchers that have changed the Big 12. You talk about Ellish for Oklahoma State and Dolcini for Texas. Coming from Fresno State, Dulcini, and taking a big step up from the Mountain West to the Big 12. And making them an even stronger championship contender. Texas will see number six, Florida State at one, and then 25th ranked Auburn at four Eastern.
One and two on Busby, who went down on strikes in the first inning in her first at bat. The former Virginia Cavalier, who started out the first two years of her career there. In 2020, came over from Virginia. Ties to Stillwater as well. Her grandmother, her mother, alums of the school. Mom was raised in Stillwater. And she's got Evans on at third. We'll have to wait as these Oklahoma State hitters continue to make Bobby and work. First time through the lineup, if you want to consider both sides of the equation as well, she'd only thrown a first pitch strike to three of the first nine hitters who came up. It's a 2-2 stroke through the middle. RBI single for Haley Busby. The lead now 4-0 Oklahoma State over Michigan. Oklahoma State tacked on another run, but guess who's up next? Julia Cottrell, the home run hitter, had a big blast back in the first inning. She's a really talented, powerful hitter. And Oklahoma State trying to have a big inning here, pass the bat down, keep this, keep this streak alive because they know what a challenge is to face this pitcher like Megan Bobian. That's really tough. And, and I gotta go back to Haley Busby's at bat because after striking out on a rise ball in her first at bat of the day, she took two change ups. This at bat makes a little bit of an adjustment, battles to two strikes, gets a change up with two strikes, stays in her legs, nice simple swing, hits the ball at the middle. And, and that's the difference between a mature hitter and an immature hitter is their ability to make a better plate plan in their second at bat after striking out in their first. That ball and that looked like it clipped Tom Meyer, the home plate umpire. So everybody's going to take a moment to, to gather things up. As you talked about, Kayla, going from a bat to a bat and, and formulating your plan, did you do anything like keep a notebook or anything like that as far as knowing the pitchers you were facing? I, I mean, there's so much planning and so many scouting reports now. I mean, I didn't have like a notebook in the dugout or in, <laughs> in my back pocket, but uh, we had tons of people in the dugout always keeping track, always making sure that they recorded every single pitch of our at-bats so we could go back and say, hey, what was my sequence that they threw me in the last at-bat or what did I swing and miss on? Where did you see that pitch? So that way you can go and really kind of catalog your previous at-bats and you can go have a better plan. And that's what this game is. It's a game of adjustments. And I can tell you right now, the good hitters, the best hitters, the All-Americans in this sport, in this game, they adjust and they're not willing to do the same thing over and over again. They are going to do something different to try and make a new outcome for themselves. The outcome in and this matchup the last time was the, the two run homer for Cottrell here at Bobian at one and one trying to make her adjustments. You know, and something that's really important for this Oklahoma State team specifically when we talk about quality at bat. Big thing Coach Gajewski said is they can't have two bad at bats in a row because there's too many talented kids on his bench. If you have a couple bad at bats, you could get pulled out of the game and give somebody else an opportunity because he's just got too much talent in this lineup. And there's definitely a distinction between a poor at bat and an out. Sometimes we think, oh, you get out, that's a bad at bat. No, you can have a great at bat and be out. But a poor at bat is swinging at pitches way outside of the zone, you know, not working the count very well, uh, not following a plan. You know, easy pop outs. Just taking at bats for granted. That's a really good distinction, too, because it, it plays into the self confidence factor of knowing that if you come back to the dugout after having recorded an out, in your mind, you may not have advanced a runner or you may not have driven a run in, but to have somebody to let you know, hey, what you did wasn't necessarily a net negative. Speaking of adjustments, Bobian comes back with her forward strikeout, erasing Cottrell. 
Man now has two away here on the last of the third. Yeah, that rise ball had a little bit more bite on it. Good spin, good movement. And those were pitches that, that was a pitch that Cottrell fouled off a lot in her first at bat. Wasn't able to put barrel on ball on that one. Wind popped out to center, ending the Cowgirls first. And with the brief interlude after the foul tip off of the home plate umpire's hand, they've got a pinch runner as well at second with the junior Jules Callahan. Takes a strike, one and two. Already one across in the inning for Oklahoma State. Strikeout number five for Bobian. The Cowgirls add another. The lead 4-0 in their first game in Clearwater. Welcome back to the 2022 St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational presented by Wilson. First game of the day here on this field features Michigan and Oklahoma State, a top 20 matchup in a tournament field that features five of the top 10 ranked teams everywhere you look. I'm Mike Cousins. She is Kayla Bro, the national champion at, at Alabama. And the sun is out as through three innings, the offense has yet to make an appearance for Michigan against Kelly Maxwell in the circle. Nine up, nine down. She struck out a couple. Her last inning in the third, she got three ground ball outs. And so now it's back to the top of the lineup. Christina Burkhardt, who struck out her first time up. And Kayla, what has made Maxwell so effective through three innings? Well, I think first and foremost, she's got pinpoint accuracy on her location. She did a really nice job of throwing to all four quadrants of the strike zone, hitting the corners, and effectively spinning the ball. And you know, something that we heard from Coach that what she does so well and why she's effective is she tunnels her pitches so well. So all of her pitches look the same up to a certain point to the eye of the batter, and then they break. They have that late break movement that's really deceiving, that makes it challenging to decipher what pitch is being thrown at you as a hitter. And this is the point in the game, Mike, where we need to see something out of Michigan. We need to see some kind of adjustment to show, all right, we saw what she can throw. We're going to sit this location, or we're going to sit this speed pitch, and see if they can go execute upon that. And you mentioned it earlier, it's a lefty-heavy lineup, so they have a tall task going lefty-lefty a lot. But now's the time to try something different. See action in the bullpen as well for Oklahoma State. You mentioned tunneling, and any time that anybody, whether it's baseball or softball, uses that word, my, my brain automatically goes to one place. There's ball four, and Burkhart with the walk is the first base runner of the day for Michigan. That place, by the way, if you're not on Twitter or if you are, it's the account Pitching Ninja on Twitter, Rob Friedman, who yeah. primarily covers baseball with what he does. But he featured two days ago Jordy Ball from Oklahoma and showed her pitches. And Jess Mendoza retweeted it. That's how it popped into my timeline. Uh, but showing just how nasty some of those pitches are and how, as a batter, or just 
some idiot like me sitting at his computer watching it and going, oh my gosh, that's impossible to hit because a pitch might look like it's coming to your belt and like you said, <laughs> end up at your chin level. Yeah, and you talked about Dory Ball. She was so fierce. She's a freshman for Oklahoma and she faced UCLA last weekend and just ate their lunch. I mean, she dominated them. It was really impressive to see tons of good movement. And it's so tough for these hitters when a pitch looks like it's going to be in certain location and then late break with the velocity and it sh the ball shoots off. It, it just plays with your with your eyes and it makes it really challenging. And that's where scouting reports and all that stuff. I mean, Jordy Ball, we mentioned her. She's a freshman, so really nobody knew anything about her. Didn't really have a strong scouting report on her or film. Uh, this is when scouting and film becomes really important as a batter because you know what pitch is going to throw. You can start to kind of pick up on a little bit of spin and movement. And you can understand that a ball may look like it's going to be on the outside corner, but it's actually going to be more over the middle of the plate. And you're going to adjust to that. One, two, to second, and on to first. Really the best contact of the day for Michigan coming from Lexi Blair. Unfortunately for her, it was right into Evans' glove, and she zipped it to first to turn two. Yeah, and this looked like it was a hit and run because Burkhardt is way off the base. Looks like she's stealing, gets easily doubled off. Nothing that she can do about it if it is a hit and run. That's just a situation where, unfortunately, you got to tip your cap to Maxwell and the defense for getting that done. And that's a tough situation for Michigan. You finally get some momentum by getting a base runner aboard, and then right away, boom, double play, and you're back in a hole. So the Wolverines still hitless. Burkhart was their first base runner. And She's already been active on the base pass this year. But now a race with two out as they look to chip away at a 4-0 Oklahoma State lead. First games of the weekend for both teams in Clearwater. With just six games on the schedule yesterday and 13 on the docket today. So you've got Maxwell to start in the circle. We saw Morgan Day, the grad transfer from Illinois State, getting loose in the pen, and now it's two and two with two down. Well, in her career, a redshirt junior, she redshirted back in 2019, is the author of a perfect game and two no hitters, and is vying to get through four without allowing a base hit. Payoff to bump. Swing and a miss, strike three, and the inning is over as Maxwell collects her third strikeout. Maxwell is just dealing. It's on the low outside corner for strike number three. Maize and blue all around wherever you look as it's Michigan and Oklahoma State here, first game of the day. Carol Hutchins, the head coach of the Wolverines. And granted, this time of the year, you've got to make a trek south to get out of the winter weather up north. You come down here, and you can't ask for much better competition than you see in this field, right? You sure can not ask for better competition. Coach, what have you seen offensively for your team that you can see that they can make some adjustments on to be more successful against Maxwell today? Well, you know, we've got a great hitting demonstration going on the other side of the field. And you got to go up there to do some damage and you know we, we're just we don't have a lot of bat speed and we're still a little tentative it's been uh, an area we just need to keep getting better at and we just had a great cut that inning and then unfortunately 
we need a break also, but uh, we just got to be aggressive and get our barrels out. Hutch, thank you. Thanks. She was the head coach at Ferris State for one season in 1982. Spent a couple of years as an assistant. And then 38 seasons later, still the head coach at the University of Michigan. Born in Michigan, raised in Lansing. And just two wins away from tying Mike Candrea to be the all-time winningest head coach the NCAA Division I level. So it's sometimes it can be uh, reduced to a, a simple explanation, right? Get your barrels moving a little bit better. And <laughs> that, that doesn't take away anything from what Kelly Maxwell has done, but a, a head coach sees it one way sometimes. That's on the ground and deep into the hole and through for Pennington leading things off. And she's got her first hit, reaching base for the second time with a walk, her first plate appearance. Yeah, sometimes it is just that simple. It, it's a mentality at the plate where you understand that your batters know what they're doing. They have good swings. They have the tools to be successful at the plate. And sometimes it's just making the decision to go out there and swing out your shoes and commit to hitting your barrel on the ball, keeping it simple. And like she said, being aggressive, not letting the spin or the speed change of Maxwell mess with your mind too much, but just simplifying it, see ball, hit ball. And that's a big lesson that you learn in softball is sometimes less is more. You know, sometimes when you go up with a clear mind, a simple task to do, I'm looking for this pitch, I'm looking for this speed, and I'm gonna swing when it comes to me, and I'm gonna swing hard when it comes to me. That's all you got to do sometimes. Haley Castle is the pinch runner for Pennington at first. As it's Carly Petty at the plate. That's, that's how I like to do my to-do list as well for the day. Let's talk about this tournament, right? You and I are going to see 12 teams over the course of three days. And, and getting ready to do this, you can say, oh my gosh, I have 12 teams to get ready for. <laughs> got to knock them out one at a time. And that can be the approach stepping into the box as well. I think I did say, oh my gosh, I have 12 teams to prepare for. <laughs> 40 games across three days. Or rather, four, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That's four days. Anytime I get counting past my fingers, that's a dangerous number for me. That's too high. But plenty of action. And it all culminates with the game on ESPN Sunday night between UCLA and Florida State, a top 10 matchup there. Yeah, we're gonna get Florida State a little bit later today and they're gonna face Texas. And we heard from Coach White and he talked about hitting. And I loved one of the things he said is, you know, you can be a great hitter and have an ugly swing. There's so much more that goes in the box between just having beautiful mechanics. And yes, those are so important, but you gotta be a gamer too. Ball up in the zone, throw down to second. And an out on the base pass as Castle is thrown out with Carson's toss up the middle. Hannah Carson has been challenged behind the dish today and finally says, I'm not going to let them run on me anymore. Throws a nice dime right down to McVeigh at shortstop to get the pinch runner out. Well, and a difference as well from what we saw earlier in the day when Evans was loose on the base pass, picking up a couple stolen bases in the first and the third. That time, Carson got her base set, got to her feet, and was able to throw from her feet rather than from her knees down in the crouch. Yeah, sometimes it's easy to throw out from that rise ball that already takes the catcher up and into a position that they can get into a throwing stance a little bit quicker. And it also could be the speed of Evans is just a little bit more overpowering. And, you know, when you go match speed to pop time, sometimes speed is just going to win out. Three of the last four batters have gone down on strikes. Bobian now has fanned six and has two away. Yeah, this has got really nice movement. A little curveball, it's moving away. 
talk about the lefty lefty matchup, that ball that kind of keeps floating away and keeps running to the right handed batter's box is tough to catch up to. Alexander lays off her second at bat of the afternoon. Cowgirls in the process of building this four run lead, plated three in the first and got one more in the third. And that's through the middle, a base hit for Alexander. That turns the lineup over now. What is a very dangerous offensive squad, a career 311 hitter at the top, Kylie Naomi has gone 0 for 2. Yeah, a little bit uncharacteristic from Kylie Naomi, had two bad at bats. I say bad at bats, did not end well, to not get on base. One strikeout and a pop-up. And I say bad at bats, for a leadoff hitter, those are easy outs. I mean, you have speed, you have athleticism, you have so many tools and weapons. The easiest way that you can get yourself to the dugout is a pop-up, and she did that, and a strikeout. Just three for her first 19 at the plate this year. Oklahoma State making the Michigan defense work as Alexander takes second base. Yeah, the Scalgirl team, I love the gutsiness. It, even though they got thrown out a little bit earlier in this inning, Chelsea Alexander decides to take a base, gets the green light, and puts a runner in a scoring position. She's now a perfect three for three on the base pass this year from their number nine hitter. Naomi has popped out over to first and this time into left for the second time to end an inning. So a runner in scoring position stranded after four for Zip. It's been the Kelly Maxwell show today for Oklahoma State. She's freezing them up, getting easy ground outs. Good movement, good speed change, and she has owned the circle today. Not a hit allowed thus far. It's our game track brought to you by Wilson. And one big swing, Julia Contro with a two-run home run in the first, has helped bolster the scoring for the Cowgirls. That's half of their offense. And last time to the plate, Michigan felt like they had something going with their first base runner of the day, Christina Burkhart drew a walk to lead off the fourth. Lexi Blair lined into a double play on a ball hit sharply to second. And that has been the only base runner of the day for Michigan as they'll go four, five, and six here in the top of the fifth. And Kelly Maxwell's been really efficient with her drop ball today. She got six ground outs. Letting her defense do the work behind her. She's only had three strikeouts. So not necessarily overpowering these hitters, but getting that late sharp movement that induces the miss hit, the ground ball, the easy out for her defense to make the plays behind her. Jasmine taking over that role at first base, who does have pop, but also prone to the strikeout which she did in more than 30% of her at-bats last year. And she goes down on just three pitches here for Maxwell's fourth strikeout. And that's the effectiveness right there of Kelly Maxwell goes downstairs early in this count, way ahead, then throws something outside of the zone up that challenges the eyes of Lauren Esman and just wins that battle easy. The 
the freshman Kiki Thole. Just at 60 pitches as Maxwell gets ahead on back-to-back -back hitters here with Thole at one and two. There has been offense and plenty of it early. Another game underway here already this morning. And Northwestern up six to two only in the third inning. On top of Texas Tech, back-to-back -back strikeouts. She struck out three in a row going back to the end of the fourth. Kelly Maxwell just finding her rhythm into a really nice groove. Even though she's through the second time through the lineup, she's looking even sharper than she did the first time through. You can see that movement. The ball just drops off the plane. She's been had just a really impressive performance. And, and last year for Oklahoma State, Carrie Eberly was their true ace, pitched the majority of their innings. And now you're seeing Maxwell get the opportunity to be that true number one to shine. And so far she's rising to the occasion, still has yet to give up an earned run this season. And yet to allow a hit today through four and two thirds. She faces a continuously young part of the Michigan lineup here. Weidra, the freshman out of Alabama, originally made her commitment to Oklahoma State, reopened the process, really intrigued by the academics at Michigan. There's a 1-1. And now you see that the back end of the commitment process changing with players, whether as grad transfers or in the transfer portal, changing their decisions. You understand that at the front end as well, where the way recruiting works in the sport, commitments happen so early in the high school process. You're a different person from when you start high school to when you enter college and from when you finish those four years as well. No doubt. I think that, you know, with the new recruiting rules now, you're going to see that trend towards making commitments later. And I mean, but for the last 10 years, it was kids were committing to these schools when they were freshmen so young you just really don't know what you want so I like that you're gonna see a, a trend towards later commitments junior year when you have a better idea of what you want to major in what school you want to attend what city you want to live in what part of the country what weather you want to play in all of those things are really big factors and for Weidra she was plucked straight out of the heart of SEC country committed to Big 12 ended up in the Big 10 Another strikeout from Maxwell. She strikes out the side here in the fifth. Kelly Maxwell going downstairs, going upstairs, working every pitch. Look no further for power than what you'll find in the Big 12. Oklahoma picked to finish first in the preseason poll for the 10th straight year as voted by the head coaches. Janae Jefferson can do it all for Texas with the Longhorns picked third, top three in the preseason for 12 straight years, dating back to 2011. And Oklahoma State, a team that went to Oklahoma City, brings back a bulk of what helped get them there. Yeah, they have reloaded this season. And they have the potential, like you said, to make it back to OKC. But they've gone through some growing pains early in the season, losing to Duke. Didn't really hit very many home runs in Arizona, which is usually the opposite. Usually you go play a preseason tournament in Oklahoma, and the long ball is so prevalent just because the air is so different there, and the ball just flies out of the park. So I think that they're going to 
progressively get better and better as the season goes on. And without a doubt, they're going to be one of the top contenders. And I have them in my World Series for this season. And we got a pitching change as well. Lauren Durkowski, the freshman out of Elmhurst, Illinois, comes on in relief here of Bobian, who went the first four for the Wolverines in the circle. Yeah, no surprise here. Michigan try and change things up. You're facing the lineup third time through. Bring somebody in that's got a little bit of a different look, and she's definitely different than Bobby and coming from the right side, more fastball, rise ball. She puts that in the dirt. And as Bobby and found out on two occasions in her first four innings, having Evans on base is not an easy task to deal with. No, and I can tell you right now, Evans, green light, steal until they throw you out, girl. She got two stolen bases on the day. You pick your pitch and you go. And that might be the impetus for a conversation as well. To go over, trying to keep Evans at first. Don't allow her into scoring position in a 4 nothing game where Michigan has been held without a hit. A full day of ESPN College Basketball Saturday concludes with our prime time matchup. Third ranked Arizona taking on Oregon. It's a 10 Eastern on ESPN and the app. Arizona 13 and one in conference action. But Oregon has had the upper hand. They've won seven in a row against the Wildcats. It's the only time they're gonna meet this season. That's tomorrow, 10 Eastern, ESPN and the ESPN app. This is our first game of the day in Clearwater. The crowds are out, a festive atmosphere for what is a phenomenal event. And Megan Bobian with the start today goes four innings. I'm Mike Cousins along with Kayla Bro. The story of the day has been Oklahoma State's proficiency offensively along with the work done by Kelly Maxwell in the circle. And as expected, Evans is on the move. She picks up her third stolen base in as many tries. Like clockwork, she makes it look easy. And that's the beauty of the position that Evans is in, is she's gonna keep stealing until she has proved that somebody can throw her out, and that's not the case. And I'm a purist when it comes to stolen bases. I like that she just goes straight into the bag, no fuss, doesn't try and hook slide. Straight there, like I said earlier, efficiency. Ooh, did they call oh, her? It looks like she early? left early. Mm. So the unfortunate outcome for Evans is that she departed too early, so she is out. That's the first out. And oddly enough, the easiest job today for Cheyenne Factor has been sometimes to not swing and let Evans go to work on the base pass. So it's 3-0 and oh here, and she takes a strike, 3-1. and one. Yeah, We want to check a little bit on this. Might have jumped a tiny, tiny bit early. So tough to tell. Clips the zone. Strike two. She takes the payoff, pounds it into the ground, and that makes its way into right field. So Factor is aboard. The first two reach. Here against the freshman Durkowski in the last of the fifth.
looks like we'll see a pinch runner here after the single by Factor with Haley Busby coming up and one out for Oklahoma State and the last of the fifth against Michigan, the 12th time that these two teams square off with Oklahoma State having won six out of the first 11 matchups for a series that dates back to 1982. Scotland David is the pinch runner at first. Busby takes a high pitch on the ground at third. Throw to second. That's out number two in the inning. Busby was at first on the fielder's choice. She goes to second, and she's in under the attempted tag by Durkowski. We can talk about home runs all we want, but a lot of these runs have been manufactured by great base running so far today by the Cowgirls. Yeah, it's one of those situations where Busby caught the defense of Michigan sleeping. She saw an open base and capitalized on the opportunity to advance when they weren't ready to make a play. You know, so Michigan's going to get that clear out, get the lead runner at second base, and then right there you have the second baseman and the shortstop that decide not to occupy. As Haley Busby's walking back to the base, she sees the open base. Because she didn't touch first when she's walking back, she can advance no problem. And that is an easy play to make as a base runner. That's an experienced play to make as a base runner. And that is something that can't happen if you're Michigan defensively. Somebody's got to be covering the base. And I can tell you right now when they got in their team huddle, you could tell there was some older players telling the younger players to have that accountability. You need to make sure you're there. You need to be ready. You're playing at a different level now at the college game, so you cannot let bases go unoccupied. As we watch that replay as well, just keeping an eye on Busby is she came back down the line slowly, clearly deliberately with what she was looking for. That's the type of play that rarely ever happens because everybody's on edge. All right, got to make sure this doesn't happen. And for the you know one in a thousand chance that that opportunity is there, look what she does. She gets herself within a base hit of score in their fifth run. Yeah, no doubt you're exactly right. This is something that you do every single time. You always walk back to the base nice and slow. You kind of peek over to second. <laughs> And once you're scheming, blue, you're there. plotting, you're <laughs> up to something. So Durkowski, despite the defensive lapse, comes back and gets the seventh Michigan strike out of the day. Beautiful scenery for a wonderful sport in Florida. Quite a way to introduce yourself to the competition in the first game of the weekend for Oklahoma State as Kelly Maxwell has, at the moment, struck out the last four batters she's faced. Six on the day, allowed one base runner, and is tossing a no-hitter as she comes out to the circle for the sixth inning. So sixth inning, and for just the second time, She's facing the bottom third of the order, which begins with the catcher, Hannah Carson. Three straight lefties here, seven, eight, and nine, with Carson, Sealer, and McVeigh, who have all grounded out. Yeah, it's been fun to watch Kelly Maxwell pitch today. I think that as the game has gone on, she's gotten better. And that's tough to do sometimes as a pitcher, but she has owned it. And the beauty of her style of pitching is she has enough movement and enough diversity of her pitches that she can give each batter a different look each time through the lineup. She can really mix up you know, the 
sequence in which she throws her pitches, the speed of which she throws her pitches. It's just really effective all around. And we talked about Mike earlier today, just having a plan at the plate. She's making it really challenging to have a plan if you're a hitter because she can throw to all quadrants. You can see her drop ball. She's got a little bit of an off-speed drop ball. She's got a rise ball. So pick your poison. Which one do you want to hit? They're all tough. We've seen two poked foul down that way by Carson here in this plate appearance. As she goes two and two, you really see the experience shine through for Maxwell. Her nine strikeouts per seven innings, second best in Oklahoma State history. And it's just weak contact up the first baseline as Carson has grounded out twice today. Well, well, we've got softball here all weekend. This is a multi-screen experience weekend for you as a sports fan. Sunday afternoon, ESPN and the American Conference. This is a critical matchup. Memphis had a huge win last weekend at Houston to end their winning streak. Now they take on SMU in Dallas, 3 Eastern, which is available for you also on the ESPN app. It's a couple of top teams in the conference, SMU and Memphis, second and third as the Tigers have won six in a row. Well, not a spot with the way that Maxwell has pitched that you'd ordinarily expect to see a visit to the circle. She works here in the bottom third of the lineup. Yeah, I don't think there's much critiquing going on in that conversation. Maybe just some, you know, game planning for the future. Do what you do. Kelly yeah. Sealer, the freshman from Monroe, Michigan. I'm a college softball player as well. Sealer's first at bat back in the third. She grounded out to the circle. Already seven ground ball outs picked up by Maxwell out of the 16 outs she's recorded. Six strikeouts. And the rare fly ball out off the bat of Sealer as there are two outs in the top of the sixth. Part of the fun of softball in Clearwater in February is that there is action on fields all around. You got so many options. You got the VIP area here over at this field. And Auburn and Wisconsin and the Tigers swinging and scoring early. Look at Auburn's offense has made a huge shift from last season. They had a pretty dismal offense last year. This year, they're making some changes, scoring some runs early, showing a little power. They're going to look a little bit different than they did last year, where they finished at pretty much the bottom of the SEC. Huge first inning for them to put four on the board. And Wisconsin, who they're playing, is coming off some big time momentum. They beat Notre Dame yesterday. They beat. Uh, I believe they beat Texas Tech as well. Oh, I'm sorry, UCF. They beat UCF yesterday. So they had a nice couple wins. A win over UCF was 9-1. to one, And then a 2-1 final in the last game of the day against Notre Dame. 0-2. Oh, with Maxwell coming up on her 80th pit, or 81st pitch.
Yet another strikeout for Maxwell, her seventh. She has no hit Michigan through six. Maxwell keeps getting better all day. Little drop ball with the flavor with the strikeout. Tomorrow, college basketball on ABC. Texas Tech and Texas, a 12.30 start time at the Irwin Center in Austin, ABC and the ESPN app. And we are not far away from a 1 p.m. scheduled first pitch for the Texas Longhorns and the Florida State Seminoles. Texas, a team that knows Oklahoma State all too well. Those teams saw each other postseason last year, and Texas coming in, picked ninth in the D1 softball preseason poll, number three in the Big 12, behind only Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. Yeah, that's a good rivalry right there, and a little extra juice added to it with Miranda Ellis transferring from Texas to Oklahoma State this season. Seen her back after sitting out a year, suiting up for the Cowgirls. And speak of, getting a pinch hit from Miranda Ellis right here today. Spoke it into existence. It was one and one against Durkowski, who threw 18 pitches coming on relief of Bobian. Her first inning last frame in the fifth. And Elish is one of those players that has the potential to be a game changer for Oklahoma State. She sat out last year, took off a year with the COVID, uh, and is a little rusty in the circle for sure. Hasn't seen pitching, hasn't pitched herself in a full game in over two years now, almost two years now. So she's got to get back into her full game rhythm. But once she gets healthy, once she gets to that stamina point where she can throw a seven inning game, or she can go hit four at bats and feel confident facing batters, she's just going to add to the potency of this Oklahoma State lineup. And the good part for her is that coming in, she didn't have to feel the pressure to be the ace. Now at her third stop, a couple years at Oregon, a couple at Texas, and the year off last year, 2021, the COVID season where everything was different, everything was uncertain, but she is a standout pitcher, comes in with her first at bat here, and goes down on strikes for out number one. Yeah, those are those pitches that are tough when you haven't seen live competition as consistently as you might want to, or it's been a while, a change up just buckles your knees. That's one that you're going to put in your back pocket later and say, okay, here's what I need to work on. Here's the pitch that I need to fight off to battle with two strikes to be successful down the road when I get another opportunity for an at-bat. Pennington has reached base twice, but not made it further than second base. She got caught stealing, or rather, she was pinch run for, and that ended up in a caught stealing. Back in the fourth inning. Three runs in the first, one in the third by Oklahoma State with Pennington at the plate here. They're returning All-American. With experience on the roster, not just in time on the field, but in life lived. She's 23 this season, turning 24, coming up in September. She leaves that on the infield. Weidra snags it, two up and two down. Drakowski's done a really nice job now coming in relief in this ball game for Bobian. A little off speed's been effective. It's induced a couple easy outs. That's what it's all about as a relief pitcher, just making sure that you do your absolute best, keep the score the same. Michigan is going to have 
One more shot in the top of the seventh inning against Maxwell, who's faced the minimum through six, working a no-hitter. And that comes in and gets the elbow as it clipped Carwile. So she takes first. Here in the spot previously occupied by Carly Petty. That's going to be a really important top half of the seventh for Michigan. First and foremost, obviously, they have to do whatever they can to get their first base hit of the game. I think that's a pride thing, first and foremost. Nobody wants to see a big old goose egg under the hit column of the scorecard. And beyond that, I think that they need to find ways to make some adjustments to move them forward. Whether they come back and battle and win this game or attempt to win this game or not, they need to get something going because it's a long weekend and they have some tough games coming up. And it is demoralizing to have no hits on the board for your team. After this for Michigan here in Clearwater, they'll finish off their day today with a matchup against UCF. That'll be three Eastern, available on ESPN+. And then tomorrow, talk about staring down double barrel terror. You have Florida State and LSU at one Eastern and five Eastern on the ACC Network and ESPN+, Plus, respectively, for those two matchups. One, two. Fouled off. Stays one ball, two strikes on Alexander. That just slips loose. And it's an easy swipe of second base for Carwile into scoring position. One good thing to look at from what Oklahoma State has done today as well is even though they've scored in only two frames, they put a runner into scoring position at least once in every inning. I think there's a lot of things that you can look at for this Oklahoma State team. You go back and say, hey, this is what we were successful at. Now they handled Bobby in as well as they could. Had really good quality at bats where they fouled off a lot of pitches. Made her throw a ton of pitches. And that gets the top of the strike zone. Durkowski fans two in the sixth. Maxwell tries to finish a no-hitter next. St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational presented by Wilson is brought to you by Visit St. Pete Clearwater, Florida and Wilson Fast Pitch, leaders in softball innovation. The offense came early for Oklahoma State against Michigan today with already a run on the board. Julia Cottrell took this pitch, deposited over the wall in center field for a two-run home run. Three runs there, another in the third, and then Kelly Maxwell has been darn near perfect. I mean, her offense hasn't had to do much because Kelly Maxwell has been dominant today. Every pitch has been working so well. She's had composure, poise in the circle today, as she has been without a blemish with the exception of the one walk. And with that one walk, she immediately had the next batter hit into a double play. So, I mean, you just can't ask for any more from Kelly Maxwell in the opening game of this tournament. She's thrown a no-hitter before, but this would be doing it against the top 25 team. And here for Michigan is the perfect player to step in and try and throw a wrench in those plans. Christina Burkhart, the sixth year player, graduate transfer from North Carolina, who's been the only base runner of the day for Michigan when she walked in the fourth.
Seven strikeouts on the day for Maxwell as she battles Burkhart two and one. Plenty of ground ball outs as well. She's gotten hitters on top of things inside to Burkhart in danger of walking her for the second time. Yeah, Kelly Maxwell all day long has challenged Burkhart on the inside corner of the plate. There's something where she sees the advantage on that pitch tight in the hands and almost on the hip of Burkhart. Burkhart out to left, and that drops. The first base hit of the day for Michigan comes from Christina Burkhart, who plunks it just to the right of the chalk down the left field line. Burkhart battling through that at bat. Again, challenge on the inside. Finally got something on the outside corner that she could get her barrel on. Just pokes this one, miss hits it, but falls barely inside of the foul line. And a great effort by Naomi to try and make this play. Nice dive, just can't make it there. And a good heads up running by Burkhart to get to second base. So give her a double. And Lexi Blair with the opportunity to square things up here as she's gone 0 for 2. The best opportunity a Michigan hitter has had today was her last at bat. Burkhart was on it first. Blair got good contact on it, but lined into a double play, hitting it right at Evans at second base. And perhaps just seeing that ball fall in fair territory can do something for Michigan here. Yeah, Coach Hutchins mentioned it earlier. You know, sometimes you need something to fall or go your way, a little bit of luck. That's a seeing eye single right there. This finds the one plop of grass that isn't covered by Naomi out there. And now Maxwell deals well upstairs. And it takes an unusual angle off the fence as well. No further advance for Burkhart other than second to third. Michigan's first run is just a base away. Yeah, for how in control Maxwell's been all day, that one really got away from her. To back three ball counts from Maxwell to the first two hitters of the inning. Ball four, something has gone awry here in the seventh for Maxwell who had not allowed a hit through six. Now two on and nobody out for Michigan. Women's college basketball Sunday afternoon on ABC. Coverage starts one Eastern, also available on the ESPN app. Look out for Aaliyah Boston in that game for South Carolina. Top five in the SEC in points, rebounds, blocks. One of the best post players in the country. So all of a sudden, the feeling of perhaps being down and out and to their final three outs in game number one here in Clearwater, Michigan has something brewing with Taylor Bump at the plate and runners at the corners. Yeah, and this is who you want up. Their home run leader from last year with 12 home runs in the season in 2021. Michigan showing signs of life here, and Kelly Maxwell just really struggling to find the zone. And it's so interesting because, again, she's been so efficient this entire game. Sometimes you just never know. You come out of the dugout, doesn't feel the same. I wouldn't say fatigue's hit her yet because she's only at 93 pitches. 
something feels a little different for her. And the Wolverines hitters making her find her spots here, laying back a little bit. in danger of back-to-back -back walks, which would load the bases to bring up Lauren Esman. Three, one. Count goes full, three and two. Here's a payoff. Oh, and she got her chasing. It's a nice recovery pitch by Kelly Maxwell. After a few tough heads bats, she's gone three, three ball counts in a row on the last batters. Not as consistent, but again, relies on that movement, that deceptive break to get the strikeout. And goes back to her bread and butter, which is the drop ball. I mean, that's her best pitch. It's what she's very successful with. And even if, by some chance, Taylor Bump would have gotten a piece of that ball, it probably would have been a ground ball. Just nothing that she could have hit out of the park with her power numbers, with her strength, kept it low. That's a smart play. And unfortunately, it's a bad pitch to swing at if you're Taylor Bump. That would have been an easy ball four, no doubt. We'd have had the bases loaded with no outs. Been in a different situation. And instead, after three straight three ball counts, she starts off ahead 0-2 on Esmond, who she struck out last time up. One of eight strikeouts as Maxwell vies for the complete game. You can tell that last strikeout gave Maxwell a little pick-me-up. A little bit of a reset right there. We did in the middle innings of the game see Morgan Day, the grad transfer from Illinois State, warming up in the bullpen. But here in this top of the seventh, there has been no action in the Oklahoma State bullpen. What a response from losing the no-hitter here in the seventh with a leadoff bloop double by Burkhart. Following that up with a walk, now back-to-back -back strikeouts and one out away from a complete game victory. Yeah, Kelly Maxwell showing her maturity right there. You know, you have two unfortunate plays where you give up a double on a bloop hit that would have been an out if it's hit anywhere else pretty much on the field. You give up a, a free pass and then you come back, have two really quality battles against the hitters for two strikeouts. And again, that is maturity. That's understanding not to let the moment get too big. Yes, you were throwing a no hitter at the time, but stay within yourself, get back to what was working, what got you to that moment and finish the game. Because despite the fact that she gave up a no hitter, I mean, the fact that the no hitter is gone, she's still got to win a ball game. The W is more important at the end of the day. It's Kiki Thole for Michigan. And to what you said, Kayla, there will be disappointment about the outcome not being what it could have been. 
But with the way things are trending, just to strike away from a victory, that's a pretty darn good performance that just about anybody would sign up for at the beginning of the day. Oh, without a doubt. And that's what you want, is you want your pitchers early in the season to be battle tested, to go face good opponents, to learn something about themselves, and to grow and to continue to get better. And Kelly Maxwell got better throughout the game, stubbed her toe for like a second, and rebounded right away. Both teams play again later on today. Oklahoma State will see LSU for Eastern, ESPNU. Michigan takes on UCF. A 1-2 trying to put it away. And it's just downstairs, 2-2. Two two. On a long highway drive, the last 30 minutes can sometimes seem to stretch for days. This has been the most laborious inning of the day for Maxwell, facing her fifth batter and taking it all the way to a 3-2 count. She'd face the minimum through six. She struck out nine. And is just a pitch away from vaulting her team to a five and one start for the year. A three two to Thole. She just clips it. You didn't expect Michigan to just roll over and give Oklahoma State the game. They're gonna fight. This is what good teams do. Coach Hutchins' team isn't going to just take that and take a no-hitter and walk off the field. No, they're going to battle, and they're going to fight, and they're going to continue to work through seven. Another 3-2 is the game's final pitch. Ten strikeouts in a one-hitter shutout for Kelly Maxwell. Oklahoma State defeats Michigan 4 to nothing. Michigan was trying to work in that last inning, but Kelly Maxwell was working harder. Three strikeouts to end the game. What performance from her today. Just solid all around. Only through 109 pitches. That bodes well for her for the rest of the tournament. And she just had everything working really well for her today. It was so impressive to watch her spin, to watch her movement. She sprinkled in a little bit of an off speed. Went with her bread and butter, the drop ball. And then every once in a while, popped a rise ball in there just to keep those Michigan batters off balance. And that's what you love to see out of your ace on day one. And she keeps a perfect, pristine zero ERA as her offense arrived early and provided in the first inning with just a couple swings of the bat, all that they would need to defeat Michigan. Still another game to play for each team this Friday in Clearwater, Texas and Florida State on deck. So for our entire crew, my partner, Kayla Bro, I'm my cousin saying thanks for watching and keep watching softball all day.